you by Talking the Line Sports Media, a sports gambling podcast by betters for betters, connecting you with the brightest, sharpest, and most electric personalities in all the sports gambling industry. So as always, pull up a chair, open up your mind, and get ready to receive knowledge you won't find anywhere else. We can't thank you enough for joining us, and we hope you enjoy. This is Wise Words. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and beautiful gambling people joining us on episode number seven, seven already. Can you believe it? Of the Wise Words podcast, I am your honored, honored, humble, grateful, and always handicapping host, Colton, Colt 45 Soroka. And I can't thank you enough for choosing to stop by and get some of the best insights and analysis on the market from some of the brightest and sharpest analysts and names in the sports betting industry. Now, my friends, I don't have to tell you this. You already know the drill. We have an, another electric name on tap here today. It is going to be an absolutely loaded show. But before I bring that gentleman in, I have another gentleman I need to bring in. And I have failed in my duty so far as the host of this show because I've said we, I've said us, I've said crew one too many times without acknowledge, acknowledging his presence here with me. So without further ado, my friends, it is time to welcome in. The TTL resident cheese head who gave it right to my Packers or my Bears. Oh my gosh, my Bears this weekend. I cannot believe that just came out of my mouth. Let's bring him on in. I am so backwards now. The man, the myth, the degenerate gambling legend himself, Mr. Riley Armags Magnuson. Partner, how you doing over there today, pal? My man, I, I thought I had zero chance of being any better than I already was but now after what just transpired I was already planning on my weekly Monday or time of recording Monday jab of my Packers getting another win but you just took all the words out of my mouth so I'm ready to rock and roll my friend I'm yeah, uh, as baffled yeah. as you are that those words came out of your mouth but hey I'm uh, I'm ready to get rocking and rolling here and uh, you know as these Monday recordings roll along more victory Mondays for me and hopefully more of what just came out of your mouth my friend I'm absolutely appalled at myself. I <laughs> cannot believe I have done this live on show. Um, you know what? We're going to keep it. I'm not going to reset the intro either. I'm just going to do it just as it was and uh, going to have that as a good laugh. We'll let you get the jab for the time being, partner. So, yeah, good for you. I would have taken that out if I were you, but more yeah, power. Hey, fuck them. What are we going to do? <laughs> All that being said, my friends, let me tell you about today's guest. Oh, wait, wait, partner. Anything else you need to get off the chest? Oh, no, I'm ready to rock and roll, my man. Okay, so without further ado, the seventh guest on Wise Words Podcast presented to you by Talking the Line Sports Media, never forget, is yet another expert in our industry and most notably, one of the sharpest analysts in the lacrosse betting market. So you know we will have plenty to discuss with him on that end of the spectrum. But before we do, let me tell you, he's the on-air host for Bet on Lacrosse with co-host Doug Greenberg, featuring PLL, NLL, NCAA, all lacrosse bets, insights, and analysis, one of the best lacrosse betting shows out there. He also co-hosts two additional shows. Let me start with our personal favorite, the Cash Consideration Show, featuring our guy, the Sportsbook and Sig. You've already seen him on this show, and also a man you might see very soon, Mr. Carl Haskell. He also co-hosts the Nads Pod, Not Another Dude Show, with co-host Noel at King of Hot Topics on Twitter. You can also catch this fella's local football and basketball play-by-play -play and color commentary for WEEW, 8.30 a.m. in Reading, PA, if you ever find yourself strolling through that neck of the woods. Ladies and gentlemen, as always, it is my pleasure to welcome in Betting analyst for Lacrosse Playground, your go-to source for all things lax, you better believe it. Tech director and betting expert at Wager Talk, 
an all-around knowledgeable dude in all aspects of the sports betting industry at newbie talks mr dan alexander oh man i mean let's go i'm i'm no longer gonna like waste time like writing resumes <laughs> i'm just gonna play that i'm just gonna play exactly what colt man just dropped let's for you I'm, I'm so excited to be with you guys you guys do a great job i'm also excited i made the top 10 i also beat out a boston dude who's gonna be following me on the show carl haskell so what no yeah, yeah. the kind words greatly appreciated uh incredible research like your guys' research department must be through the roof with Dude, Colt, I'm like you. getting all the dirt on me, man. I'm telling you, they uh they work tireless hours, my friend. You oh, know, yeah. in the background. Hey, thank you a lot, research department. We appreciate yeah. you. So well done. Hey, my friend, we cannot tell you how much we appreciate you, dude. Thank you so much for being here, Dan. Um, loads to talk about. Uh, so we will get right on into it. Um, first things first, I gotta know, my friend. It's only been uh, about a month. We've been following each other now ever since we uh, came across uh, Consig. Thank goodness Riley decided to uh, drop a little DM. Now we got <laughs> the whole network starting here. But um, let me know. What's up? How'd you get into uh, sports betting in general? I know you went a little bit of broadcasting before and then all, all kind of the content creation behind it. What made you get into all of that? I mean, honestly, as far as sports betting goes, yes, we all love it because we love winning the money. Like, don't get me wrong, but it's all entertainment for me. Mm -hmm, like, sure. like the fact that, you know, I'm able to find an edge with a low volume sport like lacrosse. And, and I'm sure some people in the open, when you're talking about, you know, an expert in the lacrosse betting space, people are probably like, there's a lacrosse betting space. I, I didn't even know that was a <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, right. But I just feel like ever since I followed sports betting and I've probably been doing it for about, you know, five, seven years I feel like I'm just such a more knowledgeable sports fan, like across all sports, because you can break down the DVOA when you're talking about football and you can break down, you know, how teams match up with the yards per play average, all that good stuff. But I want to know, you know, what is the expectation set by the place that the lights are always on in sunny Las Vegas or, you know, I guess worldwide now that you can sure. basically bet anywhere. Uh, so I always love seeing what's the expectation. Who's exceeding that expectations? Who's meeting that expectations? Who's falling below those expectations? And I just love talking about and looking at sports through the prism of sports betting because all your bias has to drop by the wayside when you're just looking at the numbers. And that's what sports betting is all about. Absolutely. Uh, Monday time of recording right now. We actually talked about that uh, on our daily show today, just about dropping that bias out. And I was like, uh, even going back to our Bears Packers to start this show, I was like, it has just made me such a more unbiased Bears fan. And when I look at lines, I know what, like you said, the big light out there, the hole in the middle of the desert, sunny Las Vegas, um, what they know, what they need, knowing some of those things definitely brings a whole different aspect to it. So I appreciate the hell out of that, my man. What do you got over there, partner? Yeah, I mean, I guess let's get right into it with uh, starting with some lacrosse stuff here. As far as the popularity of the sport, obviously, you know, from what we understand here in the Midwest, the popularity is over there in the East Coast. What's it going to take? And I mean, maybe the answer is easy, but what's it going to take to get guys like us in the Midwest to really start paying attention to it? Because I enjoy the sport, but, you know, with the other 10 leagues that I follow on a daily, weekly basis, it's hard for lacrosse to take up some of my time. So what's the next step as far as, them you know edging into i guess whether it's mine or a guy like colt's time here i i think that's the battle that all of these sports leagues are really fighting is you know how right. can we get people who aren't diehards because lacrosse right. fans who are diehards are already checking out the pll right. and the nll and ncaa but how do they get people who aren't diehards or just peripheral fans or maybe have even never even seen the sport involved right. and what's the best way to do that when there were no sports going on guys People were becoming experts on handicapping Russian table tennis. Yeah, so yeah, if, yeah, yeah. if you can <laughs> bet it, the fans will come. And I think yeah. that's something that the Premier Lacrosse League specifically has really embraced. They partnered with DraftKings the past two seasons to be offering lines. This year, they finally had player props. We made an absolute killing on the player props. And, you know, for sports bettors, all your money's going to spend the same, whether you you right. bet it hammering the bills tonight or uh, you know wherever you're uh, you're whenever you're catching the show, your NFL bets. If you cash those, they're going to pay the exact same as your MLB bets, as your NBA bets. So what I really suggest people to do is find something that you're really good at 
And for me, that was lacrosse. It's a sport that I played. It's a sport that I always loved. So when betting was able to be offered on it, I actually had a friend, and I, I won't you know, name the odds-making site, but he worked in the room next to the person who was setting the lacrosse lines. And he was like, honestly, I talk to this guy on a daily basis. Dan, you know more shit than this guy who's setting the lines. And, <laughs> you know, I, the, 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 bet sl- the bet slips, not the pat on the back, ended up showing that. So right. I think it's a great question that you ask, Riley, because that's the question that they're trying to answer themselves with these leagues. How do we get more people involved? I think television exposure, what they did, partnering right. with Peacock and having games on NBC Sports, if it's national and there's nothing else on, kind of in the doldrums of the summer, where unless you're betting the insane volatility that is the MLB, your bankroll's probably taking a hit or your bankroll's right. probably staying the same. So find somewhere that you can maybe expose. And for me, that was lacrosse and that got me into the fold. So I think there's no perfect answer to how to grow the sport, but I think sports betting will automatically bring new people into the fold. That's uh, that's just a no brainer right there. Right. And I mean, you mentioned as far as like when there was no sports going going on. And I think for, you know, lacrosse coming from my perspective, I would say, you know, taking up more of that time when it's only baseball is probably from a, just a general standpoint, the one of the easier things to do, because like you said, the volatility of the MLB is absolutely ridiculous mm. for those. I can't do it. Like, like, like credit to those who can. I can't bet the MLB. Like, yeah. I, I literally I don't even try, guys. Right. We got dragged through the sand okay. this entire season. I mean, <laughs> yeah. just absolutely dragged. We gave up and we started doing NFL season previews. It's like, yeah. boys, yeah. we're tired of giving yeah. you losers. Like, let's yeah. let's switch some gears here. Exactly. So, definitely, uh, definitely advice we can all take. I uh, appreciate <laughs> all of that too. So, you mentioned something in there. Now, remind me: is NLL coming up here? Or is that PLL? NLL no, coming up. And so NLL is the National Lacrosse League. That is indoor or what is more uh, well known as box lacrosse. That's okay. uh, that's indoor, uh, smaller fields, smaller game sizes. And also the only thing that's not smaller is the fucking goalies. Like they literally <laughs> look like, you know, at like uh, minor league baseball stadiums when they have like the sumo suits. Yeah, like yeah. that's yeah. literally what the goalies look like in the NLL. I prefer field lacrosse, which is the PLL, which is outdoor okay. lacrosse. That's summer and winter is the indoor stuff. Very popular in Canada for what it's worth is uh, is the indoor stuff. So that's okay. what they're trying to top into, get some of those international markets. So you're actually starting to answer my question for me, my man. Hey, well, I, what do I say every time, Mags? I love when we have fucking guests on that can huh? just keep scrolling right on through <laughs> nice and easy. So I was literally going to ask you what, like, as, as far as some guys like us, we've We've kind of started to look into some of the lax markets and stuff like that, but obviously not not a lot of people know. And I've watched your content in the past um, of some of the differences between the markets and, and the different leagues and stuff, but maybe super high level, and you kind of did right there, what are some of those main differences between PLL, NLL, and then the NCAA too? Well, it's just, it's a different game when you're going from field into box. And yeah. box in the indoor lacrosse, it's such tighter corners. So there's really a lot of great stick skills. You don't see as many guys playing with a left hand or right hand. They're really just stick with their dominant hand because there's not enough space. There's not enough time to get switching. Also, okay. you're looking at the difference between 11 players on the field versus six players on the field. And sure, mm-hmm. there's sixes and all this other stuff that we can go down the deep, dark, rabbit hole but we don't have time for that and also all the listeners will just fucking fast forward <laughs> it anyways so my guy, the, my the, the guy. main difference that you need to know is that outdoor the, the main thing that's always going to be happening is runs are going to happen lacrosse while it seems like it's a very high scoring sport where you're going to see um you know a lot of back and forth you do see that back and forth but actually one of the biggest profit makers was betting the under in mm-hmm. outdoor lacrosse just because of that market perception being, oh, this is going to be super high scoring. So right. if you were blindly pe- playing unders in the PLL, you were cashing at around a 60% clip, which is just beautiful. When you don't have to do yeah. any handicapping, you just oh, say, yeah. oh, I can just <laughs> hammer the under. Yeah, that works for me. And I'll sure, win 60% sure. of the time. <laughs> Let's yeah. ride. Let's ride. <laughs> exactly. So what I expect, and this is really the first season that NLL betting is going to be available. So the indoor lacrosse betting, they're partnering with BetMGM, and that's really going to be one of the first times that I'm going to be diving in from a betting aspect to the indoor lacrosse. So I'm more than happy to admit and you know, I'm all about transparency when it comes to betting because if oh, you're yeah. just lying to people telling them you're always picking winners, no one's going to believe you. Like transparent if anybody tells you they got the stone cold lock, 
run the other way <laughs> because every now and then uh even your best wise, play wise words wise words with, with, <laughs> with with all the closing line value in the world guess what it's still going to lose half of the time yeah. so mm -hmm. i i you know while i really did great in the outdoor lacrosse that's what i played more of that's the sport that i feel like i know a little bit better mm -hmm. but i feel like overs are probably going to be more prevalent in indoor lacrosse just because those tight quarters it's just insane how much even quicker that game is so uh -huh. you know just just real low level the map players is the biggest difference that you're going to be looking at indoor to outdoor and then there's different rules different two pointers this that and the other thing uh -huh. but um you know maybe maybe when we have a special deep dive lacrosse podcast yeah, here on wise go. words that's when we'll get <laughs> hey, into hey, it hey, 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 really get niche for sure i still appreciate that though man because now i honestly just listen you talk about that gets me juiced kind of looking into some of these markets and i mean if there's those edges early now haven't we and you talked about it just briefly that low volume being at such a low volume sport i mean being able to find those edges 60 percent clip let's rock and roll i'm with that every day of the week and twice on sunday so sign <laughs> me up partner what do you got my man yeah i mean so you mentioned obviously uh you know some of these lower or the sports with lower eyes on them for guys like us, when we hear that, we're like, okay, so where, how do I get into that? How do I take advantage of that? Where would you advise, whether it's us who, you know, we do our own handicapping of other sports or even the average person, where would you advise them to start? Maybe it's not even betting on games. Maybe it's just learning the sport in general. Where would you have them start? I think that's that's the exact thing is is start watching and yeah. one of the best tools that I kind of do and I said this in the PLL season too the the first three weeks of the season outside of pizza bet money and mm. I'll be honest I'm not I'm not I'm not a huge three hundred five hundred dollar bet kind of yeah. guy like I, I'm a lower volume better myself as far as you know bankroll management because like I said at the top. It's entertainment for me, guys. Mm -hmm. Like the, yeah, one of the yeah, main yeah, yeah. things that I always tell people, you know, make sure the car is paid, make sure the lights are on at the house, and then right. start betting. Sure. <laughs> you know, yeah. when I kind of exactly. look at it, when exactly. I place a bet, that money's already gone. If it comes back, I'm a pig in shit. Like I'm so yeah, excited absolutely. if yeah, that absolutely. ends up coming yeah, back. Right, right. But as far as learning the sport of lacrosse specifically, what I suggest doing and something that I have done myself when I started looking at the PLL and betting that is look at all the lines at the beginning of the week and up to game time and then get a handy dandy piece of paper or if you want to save the trees put it right on your computer and track here's a play that i think that i would like here's a play that i think and write it down don't put any money on it and right. track how you do the first couple weeks and see yeah, yeah. is there am i picking up steam on this am I, am i really not seeing this league at all but i think the main way to learn it is is watch it and listen to the commentators and you know i, I hate to plug our own stuff but that's what the show is all about check out sure. our podcast at bet on lacrosse sure we're giving out plays sure we're giving out picks but what we aim to do on every episode is not only make people better lacrosse betters it's just make them better betters in general whether that's right. kind of breaking down bankroll management or being selective in your plays or finding edges that work for you i'm all about let us all beat the books together you know yeah. what i mean like i know yeah, that yeah. there's yeah, all yeah, the yeah, competing yeah. sites and there's all the competing podcasts like for me it's me it's colt it's Riley, it's you, it's them, and it's mm -hmm. against the books. That's right. what it's all yes, about. And sir. I'm sorry, Sherapan, we want to beat up the books every right. time. You're out of the book now, man. So we're yeah, allowed sure. to say Absolutely. we want to beat up the books. No yeah. Absolutely. All right, so kind of uh, sticking on that same track. Now, I've asked this question to every single one of our guests, and I've kind of liked doing it because we've just got such a wide variety of kind of answers from across the board. Now, you've hit on it, but more for like, the first time better and you've kind of started or you've talked about you start watching start kind of ingesting what exactly um you might be good at get good at one thing and really start to find that niche now that might be kind of just for the first time better what about that de daily degenerate as we like to say here at the ttl pod so let me ask you this what is the number one piece of advice You'd give a new better that just downloaded XYZ Sportsbook to just start hammering in plays left, right, and center, but also the Daily Degenerate can use in their daily betting strategy. Whew, that's a good question, man. It's almost like you guys have been doing this for seven hey, episodes. Well, I was <laughs> saying, man, just, just slowly <laughs> but surely over here. Well, I, I think, um, you know, and I'm glad that you said X, Y, and Z because yeah. I hope you have X, Y, and Z. Having right. multiple outs yeah. is going to be one of the biggest things that you need to do. If you're right. looking to win long-term in sports betting, which is what you should be trying to do, whether mm -hmm. you're, you know, 
doing it for fun or whether you're doing it truly to turn a coin because the bigger sample size that you have, that's the better you're going to be able to learn. The bigger sample size you have, that's where you're going to really able to know where you're at in this game. So right. multiple books, I think, is something that everybody kind of already knows. It's, it's a major cliche for me. The number one piece of betting advice to new bettors, and I think degenerates need to hear it that much extra. And I don't say that in a derogatory term because I'm oh, a degenerate course. It's, too. It's, yeah, well, I, I, yeah, it's yeah. Of, yeah. Of here. Absolutely. Are you kidding? The absolute biggest is bank roll management for me. Like, have a unit size that reflects your confidence in a play. Hmm. If you just want to get action down, that should be a one percent or less play of your bankroll. So, mm -hmm. you know, if that's going to be a hundred dollar bankroll, you're talking about, you know, $10 or, or something like that. So mm -hmm. I don't think you ever want to pull off the rubber band. And let's say you have a hundred dollars in your account. There really shouldn't be any bet. If you're a hundred dollar or you're a $10 better that you should be putting, you know, $50 or more on a bet. If that's how you do your bankroll, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, I think right. that's the biggest thing that people fall into is, well, I can't lose 10 in a row, right? If mm -hmm. I lost those first nine, I'm just going to put it all. I'm going to yeah. pull the rubber oh, yeah. band off on yeah. this one. And then you lose that one. You're not only left with no money left in your account. You're also left with a pissed off significant other. You got mm -hmm. your buddies all bust in your balls. So, so, you know, yeah. I think that's the main thing is stick with a disciplined unit size and sure you're going to be pissed off if you thought you had a stone cold lock that you only put ten dollars on and why didn't i bet more on that is way better to be lamenting why you didn't bet more than saying oh man i really just pulled the rubber band off yesterday right. just because i i thought that cliff kingsbury wasn't going to be calling plays so i'm going to bet the whole entire house on the browns mm -hmm. and then the cardinals absolutely destroy the browns <laughs> and yeah exactly man so <laughs> bankroll management it's the absolute biggest piece of advice that i give any better at any level stay disciplined in that and it's a hard thing to do most deaf. It is uh it is definitely an art in and of itself, as if sports betting isn't hard enough. Bankroll management is definitely something. And that's a, a lot of thing, um, or that kind of answer is kind of on the same track some guests have said, but also kind of um not only just the bankroll management, but also not chasing. And you kind of tailed yeah. on that too, is not hey, you have a five unit down day, it gets to Sunday night football. Oh shit, let me bet the house on this, see if I can win it all back, and then Oh, now we just had a 10 unit down day out of nowhere exactly. and then you are completely screwed. So yeah, love that answer. Let's keep it rolling part. So one thing I've been interested in asking our guests that have been in the industry for a handful of years is aside from the obvious, uh, you know, the increased volume now that more and more of the country is legalized, what's the biggest change that you've seen over the last few years uh, when you first got into the industry compared to now that, you know, a million and one people are able to wager on games. That's another great question, guys, because I, I feel like the complexion of the industry continues to change because, you know, th think about even five, 10 years, especially, you know, who's going to be talking about their bets? Because the right. second that you do, your grandmother's looking at you at the corner of her eye, like everybody's yeah. like, this guy bets on sports. Oh, my God. Right. Yeah. Does he gamble and, and, yeah. and hang out with whores, too? Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was 100%. it was. It was right. the only people right, right. who were betting were the dark, dingy corners of the bar where they're going to break your leg because you didn't pay your bookie. And yep. so mm -hmm. I think the the main thing that I think is such a positive and why I think shows like this and what you guys do on a daily basis, what we do with the Cash Considerations podcast mm. is bringing sports betting out of the dark corners of Vinnie Bubatz's basement <laughs> yeah. and bringing the Gambino them. Gambino brothers. In, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and bringing it into the light because – when done responsibly, it can be a super fun pastime. It can be a great way to meet people. Yeah. It can be a great way to just be a not more knowledgeable sports better. So I think the biggest change for me and the one that makes me the most excited is the wider acceptability of talking about sports betting and you know who do you got you know what 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 what's the line on this game like i was yeah. never more proud than my dad who doesn't know shit about sports betting right. is like uh what's the line on the eagles game and i'll tell him yeah. i'm gonna be like oh there's no way they're covering six and a half <laughs> and I, i'm just i'm just right. like because like, he doesn't know the term yeah. he doesn't know any of that 
And those are conversations that I think are fun. Like I said, kind of at the top, it's a great way to look at sports betting through the prism of, 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 of lines and what's the expectation and how many points are going to be sp- scored. It'll help you in your fantasy sports. It'll just make you a more knowledgeable guy or gal or person who's paying attention to sports and who doesn't want to be the smartest guy in the room with their buddies? You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. When everybody's oh, like, yeah. oh, go to newbie. He's got all the locks. Like, you know what <laughs> right. I mean? Like, like that's oh, just absolutely. fun. And that's what it's all about for me. So uh, continuing to take the stigmas away from sports betting, I think is what shows like this do a great job doing. And that's that's what I'm most excited about in the industry personally. Yeah, absolutely. Because I mean, I even over the last year or so, I've still gotten some of that from, you know, people that I'm close to. I tell yeah. them, I'm excited to tell them what I'm doing. And they look at me like, Oh my! Oh, you're doing what now? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> you, are you are you a bookie? What what are you? Yeah. Doing? No, no, exactly. no! Wow, my gosh! Are you kidding? Yeah, it's definitely taboo. And we've asked. Uh, I'm glad you hit it from that perspective too, because we've asked uh, some guests in the past of like, what is your argument to it being taboo? And oh my gosh, it's a back alley corner deal. So yeah, we can really appreciate that because we still fight that here in Illinois. Like it's 100. It's, yeah, it's grabbing on, but it's still not 100. percent You know, like it's there, but still not there. If that makes sense. Well, I I think that that. That's always going to be around the uh, the sports betting world. And it's yeah. the same way as like, you know, look at like the Las Vegas Raiders or the Oakland Raiders. Like regardless where the Raiders were located, they're always going to be the bad boys. They're always going to be right, the yeah. silver and black. So right. the stigmas are never going to go away. But right. the more that we have guys like you, the more that we have people who are showing hey, don't leave what... yourself out there, pal. Yeah, don't yeah, leave yeah, yourself well, out no. now. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm here to help pump you guys up the same hey, way sure, that you sure. guys are to pump the tires over here. But I, I think, you know, the, the more that we can continue uh, showing what a fun space that it is, as right. opposed to, oh, my God, look at these degenerates who are uh, spending their last cents that they have mm-hmm. to try and chase a loss. Mm. Um, this is what it's all about is conversations like this. And, you know, hopefully the listeners are having as much fun as we do doing stuff like yeah, this because we wouldn't do it if it wasn't a passion. We wouldn't do it if it wasn't something that didn't mean a lot to us for sure. Spot yeah, on. Definitely. Spot on. All right. Well, one uh, kind of more all encompassing uh sports Ooh. betting sports betting content for me and then i kind of want to uh get a little state of the union on the eagles if you will to kind of oh, close things out for me so we'll go there <laughs> i'm just I'm giving you a warning shot all right? appreciate I'm you a warning that. Shot. i appreciate so, that so first things first now i've asked this question a little bit um in different ways too and i've loved actually mark drumheller last week he gave like kind of a perspective of why doesn't just Amazon start their own sports book and then they can fucking corner the market and hey, you're going to buy a bucket of popcorn or popcorn here and then you're going to get a blanket at the same time while you're sitting watching the show and oh, hey, might as well while we're watching the game, stop by the sports book too and all that different stuff. So kind of centered around content. Now, we've obviously seen it and you mentioned your dad too. Um, I mentioned this before. My dad, I absolutely love it. He's, he uh, called me the other night and he goes, I saw this plus 1600 extra <laughs> inning shit. What, what in the world is that? And I was like, oh, yeah, sports betting's kind of got pretty big. And he's like, hey, look, last I remember, I used to go down to Guido's basement and he'd take out a pocketbook and he'd just write down the money line and that was it. And that's all we had. And I was like, oh, we got a lot to discuss if that's all you know. So that being said, the integration of it coming into the daily broadcast. And also, you mentioned in your previous answer, Shows like us, like Wise Words, like you guys, the Cash Can Sid show, man. Like what you guys do over there is absolutely fucking awesome as well. I mean, such a different perspective. And I'm taking the Packers because I'm taking the Packers. Like we never, right. We never want to do it like that. And so with that being said, what do you see as the future of sports betting content? Do you see it kind of moving more along that lines of the people want the real? We know who the real degenerates are. That's a term of endearment around these parts, you know. Do you see it moving in that direction or kind of all these conglomerates kind of scooping everybody up and just getting bigger and bigger? Yeah, I I think it's probably going to be a hybrid of a couple different things because everybody's going to have their angle of how they uh, get at it. And for sports bettors, Some people like the really high volume stuff where they have 30 plays a day. Some people Mm. like having one play a day. So I think the main thing is going to be finding little niches that cater to what the specific people are looking for. As far as integration, um, you know, Dave probably talked about this when he was on with you, Dave Sherapan, like how much is too much? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's where, 
you know, that's, that's the fine line that you're talking about is, you know, how much is going to be too much where every single ad is, well, here's your bet MGM odd boost and here's your, this odd boost and that. Yeah. So you can't go past a commercial break without seeing it now to right. me. Yep. It just kind of has all become noise. You know what I mean? Like yeah. none mm -hmm. of them stand out to me cause I'm already signed up for every book yeah. there is. So there's no, right. there's no <laughs> right. new offer where I'm betting $1 <laughs> to get a hundred. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Right. Gotta go quick and sign <laughs> up. Yeah. 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 I already, I already scooped that up. So there is going to come right. a point where, you know, as, as more states become legal, sure, that number is going to keep going up. But eventually, like at every market, the bubble will burst eventually where there are only so many people who are going to be betting on sports. And once you're tapped out, where do you differentiate yourself? Where do you find uh, something that caters to somebody? And I think that's where the more established shows that are getting in the ground floor now are going to be where people come back to because right. sure you know wouldn't you much rather shop at you know like a mom and pop than be going to one of the big box stores that's something that i try and stress you know yep. if you can yep. shop local why not shop local if you can yep. support small media companies why would you not do that as right. opposed to helping jeff bezos get another fucking trip to space <laughs> yeah, you, no you know what shit. i mean no <laughs> right. so, exactly. so, so i think um really having personality is going to be the biggest thing in my opinion as yeah. far as as it becomes more available you can get picks from everybody if you just want them to talk to you about the stats that's amazing but if you can find that hybrid where you have personality where you're making yourself entertaining to listen to and it's not just a dry show here's the over under and here is why this trend yeah exactly like the robots i can't do that shit some people love right. it because you know, know they they feel like know. but you already have riley and yourself who are wearing glasses so right away people think you're smart anyways yeah, so just sure, yeah, tap, yeah, just just <laughs> Continue, just Bang. continue tapping into that and keep the personality side of it. So uh, I, I just think that that's, um, you know, it's, it's going to be everywhere. And last thing that I have as far as integration, I, I won't say, you know, who, I won't say what, but I've been hearing whisperings in the betting space that um, that same kind of thing, like an Amazon or one of these streaming services, potentially partnering with a widely available sports book oh. so that right from your television or oh. streaming device it'll pop up on the screen here's what the live over under is you can bet right from oh, your geez. couch which is <laughs> which is which is very dangerous which is very <laughs> dangerous you don't even have to be uh you know pulling up your app but i, I think you know that's kind of something that i want to throw back your guys way and get your opinions is is i love live betting for the available of edge mm. you're going to get mm. but right now Live betting while watching a game, especially if you're streaming it, is a horrible experience because yeah. you already know what happened because the line goes up. Oh, well, they score a touchdown right here. Line goes down. Oh, they must have had a turnover. So I think that's something the industry has to figure out because live betting is one of the funnest ways and – for betters, it's one of the best ways to have an edge. You know, you're yeah. you're getting to have your idea pre-flop, and then the flop comes out. You're able to break down and try and decide. Oh, you know, here's here's where I have an angle. Here's where I was completely wrong. Let me adjust my handicap. So right. I think the live betting experience needs to get better because right now it's just it's not good. Most definitely. And before I hit on that, you you keep just sliding in uh, sly little, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, you guys are doing your thing. And we appreciate the <laughs> shit out of you, Dan. I mean, for Thank real, you. I uh, we watch I watch uh, Cash Can Sit every, every chance I get every time you guys drop the weekly show. And I mean, what you guys are doing over there, like for real, you guys have just such the the best outlook and aspect you and Dave and Carl. I mean, I can't wait to talk to Carl and then hell who, who the hell knows? Maybe we have the whole fucking crew on here at the same time. We just, we just get weird. Who knows? A little round knows? table. Who well, knows? The, the who thing knows? is, we is get weird. And, and you guys know from the episode you did with Dave, he is just such a, a great resource of knowledge yeah, because yeah, yeah. of the years that he's had behind the counter. And he's right. a sports better now. You know what I mean? Yeah, but he right. still has all of those connections. He still, you know, I find it amazing. Like sometimes before a line is out or anything, just text Dave or, or message him on Twitter uh, at sports BK and SIG and just be like, hey, man, uh, you know, what would you line this game? 
it is rare that Dave is a half point off. It's yeah. it's fucking incredible, guys. <laughs> so I appreciate you saying that. Yeah. Dave's the uh, the engine that makes that train go sure. because his unique perspective on this industry, um, I learned so much from him. He's a great friend of mine. He says all the time, he's like, newbie, we're like fucking soul brothers. He was, he was born <laughs> a day, like his birthday is a day after mine. So obviously I was born a few years after right. Dave. Was, but, <laughs> sure, uh, sure. but like, like me and him, we're Leo brothers like that. So I appreciate you guys saying that Dave yeah, is yeah. a great resource of knowledge and, and he's the the thing that helps make that show what it is for sure. Yeah, man, we, we appreciate the hell out of you guys. And we definitely look forward to continuously growing our relationship and our network. I mean, we, I can't tell Riley how many times like we just, uh, we sit down, I'm like, dude, I'm so glad that you looked at me like, Hey, what do you think? I just, I messaged consig, just drop something, see what happens. I'm like, <laughs> he Fuck loves it. it. He it. loves yeah. it. Let's go. And then it, and 100%. then, Hey, let's go. Next thing I know he's below me saying, let's go. I'm like, is this my real life? Is it what, is what we're really doing? I guess so. All right, let's keep it rolling. No, so, that's how I met Dave too. And okay. you know, sorry to jump in. No, is no, no, through. No through a Twitter DM. So so he put out one of his giant ass uh story time from the books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which I'm sure he tells like his kids and they actually are like story time like they're falling asleep. But guys like <laughs> us uh we like absolutely love him. So yeah, he put one yeah. of those out. I liked every single tweet cuz I was fascinated by it. He yeah. messages me and he was like, "Hey man, you know, thanks for the follow." Thanks for checking that out. I see that you host a radio show because I used to do drive time radio sh before I, you know, hopped on with Wager Talk and did yeah, more yeah. Uh, production and stuff like that. So we used to do a weekly hit because it was right after he had, you know, kind of retired from being in the book after mm -hmm. situations in his life that he talked about on your guys' show as well. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, so he was like, I'm trying to get more into the media side. So how about? I help you help me help you help me. We did a weekly uh, we did a weekly hit called "A Look Inside the Book" with the sports book consigliere. He got to get his radio chops up. Yeah. I got to have an incredible guest, and now he's on yeah. Better's Eye on MLB. So <laughs> I hate to it, take man. credit it's, for yeah. where the consig is at, but it's all about Twitter <laughs> hey, networking. We won't we yeah. won't tell him uh, you 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 told us. So <laughs> yeah. well, secret yeah. safe here, brother. No yeah. problem at all. <laughs> <laughs> but as far as integration, see, we got in a rabbit hole. That's that's why I know our relationship with all you guys is destined for greatness but we're getting rabbit holes left right and center when we start talking to you guys but as far as integration and like streaming and live betting yeah man like sometimes well fuck the things on nfl network and mags is two plays behind me in chicago I can't even tweet about it and then yep. and then i'm i'm all the way up here in in the burbs and we're like going back and forth he's like wait wait don't say anything i don't know what the fuck's happening yep. why does the line move 200 points what right. the hell happened i'm like oh here comes a touchdown junior died <laughs> and don't look yep. now but yeah, I, I definitely agree with you. It sucks ass right now. I just, I don't know. Cause like even the standard NBC, CBS, like those broadcasts are just like even a little bit delayed. So mm -hmm. even at that time, it's like, damn, how can you accurately live bet? But yeah, I mean, a stream on like Amazon or whatever, you're talking sometimes 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds. And it's like, you can't do that, especially in a sport like, like um, NFL. I mean, let alone like NBA. I mean, maybe a team goes on an 8-0 scoring run all of a sudden and you turn off your TV. I mean, yeah, I think there needs to be some improvements for sure, but I don't know really where you start with all that aspect. What do you think, Riley? Yeah, as far as the streaming, it makes it hard. Like, I'm raising my yeah. hand because I had, like, last night, Sunday Night Football, I was trying to do this in overtime for the Steelers. Mm -hmm. I pop open my app. The Steelers make a big play. And I'm like, all right, it's got to be pretty close. And it's, like, plus 140 for the Steelers. And then my eyes light up. And I'm like, wait, wait a second. Wait a second. There's got to be, re like, something. I must have missed something. They threw an interception or something. And I had to hold myself back. Mm -hmm. And then, in reality, it would have ended up being the right play because they obviously ended up winning. But, yeah, as far I think this, what you said as far as streaming really holds it back on our, and everyone's end, I think. Yeah. The, the one thing is I had a buddy who wasn't able to watch uh, one of the games. So what he did, he just went on to his sports betting app and he just watched the live odds. And that's how he knew what was going on in the game. Yeah. He would text me and say, what just happened? I just saw it go up by seven points. And I was like, yeah, there was an interception. There was this. So it, it's almost like, you know, it's it's uh, one way that you can, if you know what you're looking at, you can watch a game without even watching a game. But I think, right. I think that's something that they really need to shore up is how to get live betting uh, exactly exactly where it needs to be because I think you guys just nailed it right there with two concrete examples of mm. where it's just it's a great experience in theory and mm. once that gets there 
I, I might not even be making pre-flop bets. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, 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 why not come why? in with a hardcore handicap, sprinkle, you know, maybe like a unit or something, and then save your big bets to see if you uh, know what you had or, or what you didn't. You know, maybe think, I think this game's going to go high scoring, and then if it starts a little lower scoring, you're going to get a greater or a better number on the total. So mm. once that gets short up, I think it's just going to take it to a whole new level. And you know they're trying to make some of those innovations for sure. Almost definitely. Most stuff. All right, partner. Before I uh, I take it to the place that uh, we've been avoiding the elephant in the room, if you will, for this entire show. Any uh, other sports betting questions? Anything in general you haven't got off the uh, chest so far? Go right ahead, my man. I've actually got some questions that we'll build off of uh, oh. Dan's State of the Union here. So. Oh, oh baby. All well, right. Actually, first of all, Colton's gonna ask. Colton's got the State of the Union for the Eagles. Are you all Philly? Eagles, Sixers. Oh, yeah. As, uh, if, if you can't tell, you probably can't see as much on the camera, but I got a lot of fucking gray hair. <laughs> Uh, it's it's because it's because I am indeed a four for four Philadelphia okay. fan. You, you factor in the union. I watch some of that. So five okay. for five. You factor in the Philadelphia Wings. Make it six for six. So okay. I love them all, man. And I also love my Philly cheesesteaks too. So don't get me I uh, I might be paying for these words uh, later on. Uh, maybe somewhere down the line. But hopefully this starts a good rivalry between us. Release the Kraken, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Got him tonight. We'll see what happens. So love it. <laughs> Uh, all right, State of the Union, uh, kind of a two-parter. Philadelphia Eagles, what's how's everything going straight from the East Coast, straight from Philly? What's everybody feeling in the city? What's the state of the stadium? What's happening there, number one? And number two, what fucking sports book do your boys owe or what back alley <laughs> deal do they do? Because the uncanny nature of them, regardless who's – Who's the head coach? You want to make it old Dougie? You want to put old Carson at quarterback? Or if you want to do it now, you want to do Sirianni, you want to do Hurts. The uncanny ability to sneak in the back door and make football plays that make no fucking sense at all at the most perfect times just begs the question, who do they owe? What's going on? <laughs> What's happening over there in Philly, PA? I, I I have no clue. I wish that I could answer that same question, but uh, I that's that's part of the reason why I love betting on the birds when they're dogs because they are yep. the king of the backdoor cover. <laughs> yep. And and uh, I actually heading into the season as far as you know the state of the birds go. I'm glad you asked about the stadium too, is because I'm a season ticket holder. I go to as many games as I possibly can. I sit way up in the nosebleeds with the true degenerate fans. So uh, I love it up there. So I, I think I have a pretty good you know uh, finger on the pulse of uh of philadelphia sports Let's fans go. and one myself Let's go but heading into the season um i i was not high on this eagles team because how could you be high on an eagles team who is having a guy as their head coach who's never called plays before they have a defensive coordinator who's never called schemes before they have a a, a quarterback who for all intents and purposes i actually liked the uh the, the rock paper scissors personally I from that. syria <laughs> I, I, I was a, i was a fan because i'm all about yeah. uh yeah. The big decisions. I'm guessing the way that they decided to hire Sirianni was a similar process. <laughs> oh uh, well, nobody else wants this job. Let's Rochambeau yeah, this shit. Yeah. <laughs> so, so you know, when there was, uh, for all intents and purposes, you know, a, a quarterback who's a rookie coming into this year in Jalen Hurts. My expectations, it wasn't like they were low. It was just that I didn't have any. You know, I, I have a ticket in my pocket of under six and a half wins for the Eagles. People always bet the Eagles. They're an insanely public team that people just always get to the counter on. And I personally don't understand that perception around them. I thought that this team was, this is all a rebuild year. It's, it's see what you have in Sirianni. It's see what you have in Hurts. So mm. there's been a lot of people smacking the panic button and is Sirianni on the hot seat is this guy on the hot seat yeah this hurts the guy I don't think I I really you know care about that kind of stuff mm. like for me I'm looking for those those little silver linings and yeah. for me uh Devontae Smith has been a great one that guy oh, is an God. insane route runner he's a guy who I was super excited about coming into the year he was one of the only reasons why I had any somewhat excitement around the right. birds was getting to see him because I thought he was a great prospect coming out of college coming out of Alabama Roll and time. he's um you know definitely lived <laughs> up to it for sure uh maybe not quite the level of like Justin Jefferson or you know Jamar sure. Chase from LSU but I still think that uh, he's going to be a pretty damn good player so mm -hmm. A lot of people are hitting the panic button, guys. And I personally, I didn't think there was any panic button to hit right. because 
there was no expectations for me coming into sure. this year. And if they continue at least backdoor covering and losing the game and my six and a half ticket looks great, that works for me even more, guys. Absolutely. That's kind of that's kind of how I imagined uh, where you take everything. Uh, like I said, we talked to uh, Mark Drumheller, um, Philly guy himself, too, on our last episode. And that's kind of where he was. He's like, man, I didn't really have uh, super high hopes, super expectations. But obviously, if I trash him out too much, I'll get a bunch of heat. So can't, can't do all of that action. But I still yeah. love them. Like, yeah. don't get me oh, wrong. Yeah. Like, they're my no, team. Yeah. Absolutely. I bleed green. I still go to the games. I still uh, enjoy talking about them, watching them. But for me, until Howie Roseman, until the general manager is gone, and you guys have seen my rants on Twitter, until he's gone, this is what you're going to be getting with the Philadelphia Eagles. So strap in, Eagles fans. You can bitch about the quarterback all you want. You can bitch about the coach all you want. You can bitch about whatever you want, the offensive line, people sitting out, whatever, until Howie Roseman is gone. This is Eagles football, so strap in and, and just keep betting the under. And then and then you're it's a win-win for you, Eagles. You, you know what? <laughs> Honestly, if you just flip Eagles to Bears and DM to Ryan Pace, we're, we're in the exact same boat. So yeah. you know what, newbie? I can I can empathize with you, if you will. Yeah. So, and Nagy's a PA yeah, guy. Uh, I never got the Nagy love, man. So I, 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 I feel bad yeah, for me. you, Don't man. Don't me. Uh, hey, <laughs> Don't we will, we'll be here for the next fucking month. Yeah, house. you're we, right. We're going to start right. on that. That's now. on me. That's on me. <laughs> Me, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mags, what do you got? Yeah, so building on the Eagles and your Philly teams, one thing I've been interested to ask guys is about betting on your favorite teams because one a piece of advice that I keep hearing from experts in the industry is don't bet on your favorite teams. And in a vacuum, is that good advice for the majority of fan bases? Probably, but the average person doesn't want to hear that. They're going to hammer in, and you're, you know, in Philly's case, they're going to hammer in the Eagles nine times out of ten anyways. So what would you say is the importance of, I guess, giving fans the tools to be smarter betters on their team? Because I I try to give out a uh, – I'm a Packers fan. I give out Packers blog bets each week. But there's certain cases where I'm like, hey, maybe don't bet the Packers spread this week. This looks like the biggest trap line in the world. Here's some other things you have for it's a being objective. And, and I actually yeah. – I when experts say, you know, don't bet on your favorite teams, I completely disagree because, in my opinion – what team do you know the most about? Right. It's your team. Right. So I think sure. as long as you're able to stay objective and not look at it with rose-colored glasses, right. one of your biggest edges could be betting on the team that you know more, right. that Kinda you're following, it. that that you're following the local news. So you know this left tackle who's out, who's not getting any credit because who's talking about offensive lines or, you know, you know that the long snappers banged up. Like that's not information that is widely available. That's mm. probably not built into the line. So don't just hammer your favorite team and hammer all the overs on their player props. Cause right. well, they're going to kill everybody Yeah, be objective. Yeah. And as far as betting on, you know, your favorite teams, one of my favorite things, I don't do it blindly, but if I think a good bet is against the Eagles, that's my favorite bet on the card really? because okay. Okay. it's a win-win in my okay. opinion. Either I'm going to be happy and the $20, the $40 that I lose, hey, at least my team won, right? Mm -hmm. And if they lose, I'm profiting off of my pain. So I love the win-win aspect of betting against your team. Yeah. I don't do it blindly. Um you know, one of my favorite things to do is uh, break down like the player props. Like if I know that there's a wide receiver who's going to cook up the the rough secondary for the Eagles, I look for a way to attack that with, um, you know, maybe an over on receptions or an over in the case of uh, someone who's a, a downfield player, take their longest reception over mm. because I know that Steven Nelson's going to get burnt on the outside by him. Right. So I know if he gets that shot, it's either going to be a PI or they're going to be coming down with it. So I actually push back when people say, you know, don't bet your favorite teams bet your favorite teams and yeah. use the edge that you have. Just don't think that your team is the best in the world because spoiler alert, they're, they're not. So, right. so yeah. that's, that's the way that I look at it. Yeah. I think that's fantastic. And I think the key thing you said is how well do you know your team? Cause in my case, I'm also a Blackhawks fan, but I don't know them quite as much exactly. as I do my other three teams. And so last mm. year I found myself losing 80% of the time in the Blackhawks. I'm like, all right, I clearly don't know as much about them. Why am I doing this every single time? Yeah. So in that case, I back off. But like you said, I, I definitely respect the uh, betting against your team. I I just can't bring myself to do it. So I, I, if you're winning money off that or if you can accept 
if they win, you're losing money, but your team won. I, I, I can respect that. I just, uh, I haven't gotten myself to that point quite yet. I have well, no shame. No shame over here. <laughs> it's, also, yeah. it's also, you're talking to a Packers fan who has never had yeah. to know that pain yet. So, right. hey, when old A-Rod is out of the fucking building <laughs> next year, pal, we'll see how you're talking, all right? I we'll own you. I hey, own man. you. Oh. Oh my gosh! Don't start me down that rabbit hole again. I'm I can't sorry, even believe Max, it. All my subjects on me today, again. Dan. Just mute my, <laughs> my mic. Just there. mute my mic. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Mags. Anything else, my man? I guess real quick. 76ers over under fifty and a half. I think you got to go over. I, okay. I think that regardless what ends up happening with this whole mm. Simmons saga, I think the rest of the players are going to have enough chip on their shoulder that this is going to be a very hard team to out. I think they have that bad taste in their mouth from how last year ended. And I just hope that they can get somebody in here who can allow Joel Embiid to not have to do everything. Because right. even when he's in the best shape of his life, he's worn down come the postseason. Right. I think they're still going to be a terrific team at home. So I would take the over on that one. And uh, I, I'm kind of, uh, you know, backing a away from what I just said, bet against your teams. In this <laughs> yeah. instance, sure. I think the Sixers are a pretty damn good team. They should be yeah, a yeah. contender in the East again this year. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I think a lot of people I'm seeing are taking the under just because of all of the, the public narratives of the offseason. Yeah. More often times than not, especially now that Ben Simmons is literally in the building, come a couple of weeks, most, more often times than not, that stuff kind of blows over and becomes an afterthought, in my opinion. Most deaf, most deaf. Newbie. Dude, thank you so much, man. <laughs> Appreciate the hell out of you. <laughs> Cannot tell you how much. Everything right below me, the whole episode, wise words, my friend. Yeah. Nothing but it the whole time. I'm sure we got plenty of other uh, lax rabbit holes we could go down, plenty of other betting rabbit holes. So I think we're going to have to uh, maybe a little group chat started here, maybe get this uh, <laughs> full roundtable discussion on the map here. I'll, uh, we'll drop a little line to consig. We'll see what's up for sure. But, hey, cannot tell you how much we appreciate it, my friend. No, right back at you guys. I am always a DM or a text away. And I guess, again, anytime you have uh, one of the members of the Cash Can Sid show on, take the over. So uh, so we appreciate the folks rolling with us on a little bit longer of an episode, but uh, appreciate you guys. A lot of fun. Uh, yeah. Like I said, anytime, guys, I would love to hop back on. Great stuff and keep doing the great work you guys are doing. Thanks, Absolutely. Man. We will do that and we'll hold you to that too. But before we get you out of here, Mention the Cash Can Sid show. Let us know. Let all of our viewers know. Anybody who might have stumbled upon episode number seven of Wise Words. Where can we find you? Where can we get your insights analysis? How can we start cashing lax tickets all together? At Newbie Talks. That's N-E-U-B-Y-T-A-L-K-S. As you heard from this episode, I never shut the fuck up. So it's an apropos <laughs> name. <laughs> yeah, it's the, it's the apropos name there. So uh, that's where you can find everything that I'm doing in my bio that uh, Colt was so kind to drop for me. Like I said, don't need a resume anymore. You can find all those links there. Follow me on Wager Talk. Going to be doing some more things here in the NBA season as well. At so. bet on lacrosse couldn't be any easier if you want to cash some lacrosse tickets. So, so many ways to find me. And also, I love throwing down some delicious food. So, follow me there on Twitter go. and I will 100% make you salivate every single time. This guy over here, uh, like uh, language. when he's uh, not handicapping Colt, he turns into Chef Colt. Woo! So, hey, we got to have a collab. We got to have collab dude, bets. We are, and, hey, yeah, hey, hey, <laughs> bets, bets, and rest. I mean, hey, we got, we got to talk about some stuff off the show here. I mean, we got <laughs> go stuff. to Portillo. We got we'll stuff. Throw down, down some dogs. <laughs> look at this guy. Look at this we'll guy. Get to know each other, man. I love it. I love it. Well, again, Dano, appreciate the hell out of you, man. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, cheers to many more of these coming down the pipe, too, my friend. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Absolutely. All right. Well, as always, my friend, friends, that does it for another episode of Wise Words. We cannot tell you how much we appreciate each and every one of you that decide to stop by this here podcast, get you some insights, analysis that you ain't going to find anywhere else from some of the brightest and sharpest analysts and names in the sports betting industry. As always, we hope you have a spectacular rest of your Wednesday, unless you have any other plans. And hey, partner, you know the drill. Let's cash some tickets. <laughs>